Okay, so let's talk SQL and K2 integration. The two main tools that I will generally have up are <coughs> the SQL Management Studio to verify if I already have a tables in place. You just have to verify that the K2 service that you're using to interact with SQL has access to the database. I'll generally make it a DB owner and then I'll give it read and write access um, if we look at my the current user, well, let's go with like the K2 service. Um, I'll give it uh, user mapping. Will generally be as if it's connected to the actual K2 database. So I pulled in and created a a database called Star. Uh, I went in and mapped the K2 service as DBO. And then I will generally give it a little bit more access. I don't think this is enough unless you've set this up correctly. I'll give it DB reader, DB writer, DB owner. You, you may or may not need the owner, but um, you need the schema for DB owner. You could play around with this if this conflicts with your policies, but um, I think the reader and writer is pretty uh, essential on that one. So again, I have the star database with some tables in it. I've just gone in and I've created some dummy, you know, I pulled in some from customers and then I've created a person's uh, table. So just verify the tables that you want to access. So I want to access the star database and then um, the tables. You can also access any star procedures that are here. I don't have any currently against this, but they will be exposed when you create the smart object. So I then I'll switch over to here. I've already created a couple instances. You can create as many as you want. The tricky part is that when you create a solution against this, that this actually stays in place. Um, if you go forward and you create multiple of these, it could get confusing when you're trying to create new solutions against that part of your database. So I can delete these, and then we'll uh, try to, I'll just recreate them. So right click on SQL Server Instance Register. I will generally go Service Account because that's the account that we verified that had access to that part of the database. Uh, local host is if your K2 server and your SQL Server reside on the same. I'm going to, this server's name is also DLX, so I'm just going to put that in. And then the database is star. This is another, this use native SQL execution is very essential, as in I have true because native, as in I'm my K2 and my SQL reside on the same server. If your servers are separate, if your K2 server and your SQL server are on separate servers, um, I would put false here. It allows you to, if you don't have this set correctly, when you go to tr try to fire a list method, it'll fail. Everything else works. I don't know why, but um, that's fairly essential. So this is all I really need. I need the database. I need the server and verify native SQL execution. Click next. So here we can uh, modify the display name if you have multiple SQL servers you could say on this particular server the naming here doesn't matter it just is relative to you I can come in and modify it uh, the s system name also you can modify but you would have to keep everything together you would have to say on local you know you just have to keep everything together to make sure that it fired correctly I generally don't mess with system name display name I don't really mess with either, but uh, you can. Description and GUID, the GUID. The GUID is automatically generated. And we'll go ahead and click Add. So now what I've done is I've created a, a service instance, which is the first part b right before creating our smart objects. This is essential. This is our communication from K2 to our database. Just as if we were going to create a SharePoint service instance. This is my main portal also on this server. So I have to create from here. I can create it or I can go to my K2. I think I've shown you before where you can um, 
you can generate the smart objects and it'll automatically create the service instance and then also populate everything down into your smart objects. So I have the service instance created. Now I want to create smart objects behind this. I'll show you real quick. Um, because mine doesn't have store procedures, I nothing's exposed here, but I can see my tables and I could see, you know, let's say I wanted to work on this person's I could right click on this instance and I can uh, create smart objects behind it. I like to right click on the instance and create it from here because you can select what you do and don't want. Maybe I don't want these to be created. I'm just shooting for this person's. Also, it's important uh, to see that you can actually, if you modify this table, you could come in here and you can, um, it'll update this whatever a smart object you're creating. So I generally like to use this method so that I can come in later on and uh, update it. So I'm just going to uh, create, uh, the category is going to be star, so that's what we're going to look for after it's created. Here's star and my table. And then now I can actually execute the methods. I could see what methods are available. They're built for me on automatically. I can list the items that are in there. Well, Apparently this one didn't have much in the, I may not have created this, the, the tables effectively, but um, I can list the items that are in there. Um, let's see. So the creation, I paused it for a second there, the creation, when I created this table, it wasn't created in the most efficient means, I just kind of went in on the fly and created it. It looks like my other tables within here were created a little bit better. The Some of the main points when you're creating and that you might have problems is that you can't have temp tables. You have to create variable tables for K2 to interact. There could be some buggy behavior if these, um, if you're creating a store procedure that uses the, is interface with K2. It's some of the gotchas, but um, basically what I w went in and did is I I went into the star and I um, created smart objects and I created my other tables. So because I created them, now I'm in an update mode. If I were to modify any of these guys, uh, it would automatically be updated. To see your updates, if you were to modify in SQL and to see the updates here, you actually have to come in and uh, refresh the service at the very root level that's going to refresh everything related to your item. So you can you can refresh your whole SQL Server instance to see your updates or you can come down into the root of whatever database you're working with and you can refresh from here. So I went in and I modified uh, and had these tables now. Um, I can now execute a smart object. I can do my create read update list. I'm not sure if I have anything in here. I did apparently did one but uh, that's it in a nutshell let me know if there's anything you need so basically now with this these being created I can come over to my K2 designer I can refresh and look for star and now I can create um, I can right click on this and I can design a view around this and it'll automatically pick up those any methods associated with that smart object. If I do uh, the wizard, anything that was, was in there. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Take it easy.